Blackman. Joining us now, trial strategy consultant Julie Blackman, who has worked as a jury consultant to several high-profile criminal defendants, from Martha Stewart to Leona Helmsley and Senator Menendez. And the first time he was tried, Julie, you have spent some time in the courtroom this week during the start of Cohen's time on the stand. And I know you were observing the jurors very closely. What stood out? Well, I was, and I would say that the thing that was most notable was sort of their level of attentiveness. They were clearly interested and involved and scanning the group as a whole. Some of them sat sort of chin up the whole time, facing the, the witness and really being attentive. Um, there were, you know, for the most part, jurors don't react dramatically. Um, I mean, there's this sort of famous New Yorker cartoon where the jury is throwing up in the jury box and the judge is saying that the jury will disregard that evidence. Um, we don't see many dramatic moments like that in real trials. But there was a moment in this case where I saw six of the jurors shift in position suddenly. They all kind of moved around and readjusted themselves at the same time. And it was the moment at which um, Cohen in his direct testimony connected Trump to events related to the election. And what did and that to tell the, you, to see them you know, move? They were moved, not only physically, but also emotionally, by that moment of testimony. And Trump, at that moment, in, in Cohen's testimony, was reflecting on sort of the effect of what was happening. I mean, he said, um, you know, if I get past the election and win, that's great. And if I don't win, I don't care. Um, good testimony for the prosecution, something that the jurors reacted to visibly in that moment. Interesting. What are your thoughts on just how this jury has stayed together? The court has not lost a single juror. They've been there every day. They've been prompt. What does that tell you? It is remarkable. I think they have a sense of themselves as being a part of history. I think this is a moment where they understand the pivotal nature of their role. And I have to say, I've been in and out of many courtrooms in my career, uh, 40 years. I've never been in a courtroom that felt like this courtroom. And it's a courtroom where there are officers who are wearing bulletproof vests who are armed, who stand throughout the entire trial, who stand in the center aisle, who stand along the periphery of the courtroom, and who are themselves always in motion. They're scanning the aisles. They're looking back and forth. Um, I felt a little reluctant to scratch my ear while I sat mm. there because we were being so closely surveilled. And I think the jurors have a sense of that. They're a part of that. And they see how important all of this is and how much attention it's receiving, not specifically from the press, although, of course, that's part of it, but from the court personnel, from the way in which they're handled and processed and how carefully orchestrated this is because security is so important and because history is on the line. Yeah, in fact, we've been hearing, too, in terms of the interest of this trial, there have been these long lines from outside the, the courthouse every day of public trying to get in. Just, you know, could be any old person who is allowed to be in the courtroom if they have a seat. So, so jurors are told they should not weigh a defendant's choice not to testify against them. Against them. But obviously, it, it's... It's kind of this, you know, elephant in the room, right? They're aware if he's not going to testify. So if Trump doesn't take the stand, do you think jurors will look at that in a neutral way? Um, I think they'll do the best that they can to follow the law. I mean, I, I was just watching your show and heard your guests opine about whether or not he'll testify and saying no. I, I kind of think he might. I mean, I think he's someone for whom um, this is an extremely high profile moment for him. This has never happened to um, someone who's been president and is a presidential candidate. And he knows himself to be someone who can be persuasive. Um, and I think he might testify. And that said, if he does not, um, the jury will follow instructions. And I, I believe we'll, we'll treat him fairly. We'll treat the whole process fairly. I think one of the other things to reckon with at this moment as we're coming up on summations is how really important summations are and how jurors hear summations and, in fact, hear all of the testimony of the trial before they receive their instructions mm -hmm. on the law. Right? And so there's a way in which their ability to know what's important in terms of the, the law is limited because they haven't heard it yet. Interesting. And so summations 
are especially important for sort of pulling the evidence together in ways that are favorable to one side or the other in advance of hearing how all of that will read on the law. Okay. So the, the jurors have a significant job to do in figuring all of this out. And they as a do. result, I think they are very attentive to what the law requires well, once they finally get it. Julie Blackman, really appreciate you being part of our conversation today. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and expertise.